Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Keith Simmons. There you go, my guy. Hey. I'm pumped for this. I am. Uh, I, I, we, we have been talking for probably the last, you know, half hour or so, because Dr. Simmons uh, from Griffin uh, Spalding County Schools uh, in Georgia, and just a little shout out to all the people in Griffin Spalding. I was lucky enough to be the keynote this year. Uh, I can't believe you made it because you're a big Tampa Bay Bucks fan. We're recording this the day after they won their playoff game against Philly. Hey, what I've been saying for the last three weeks up here: go Bucks and nobody else. <laughs> Dude, did you get some? Did you get some flack? You know, not cheering for the Falcons. Like, is that a big? Is it a big Falcons school district that you're in, or you don't care? It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. <laughs> but I, I've been a Bucks fan since 1976. Go Bucks! That's right. Hey, you know, I, I we didn't talk about this before. I took my daughter to the creamsicle day when they played the lions. It was the best. It was so awesome. And I don't know if you saw it. They did. Everything was like throwback. Like even yeah. the, the, the screen, the, the way they did the numbers, it was such a cool day. And I, I loved it. I got, I'm, I'm all in on the orange jerseys. That's like probably mm -hmm. my favorite Jersey ever. Yeah, those were the days of, of Leroy Selman, Batman, yeah. Ricky Wilder, all of those guys, cream sickle days. I mean, the old sombrero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. I love it. And I'm going to, I know everyone listening is in, in education and they kind of have to like sit through a little sports talk every time with me. So I'm going to get past it because I could do this all day with you. So uh, Dr. Simmons is a superintendent in Griffin uh, Spalding County Schools. Uh, he's actually, you know, taught, he's been a principal at the high school level. Um, and just, I just, it was amazing to meet, meet you in person. And so uh, we really connected and I just love talking to you. And I know um, I was just really enamored with your conversation with your staff and you, you did a really good job of like pushing them a little bit, but also having that affirmation of the work that they're doing. And I think sometimes we can kind of lean too much in one area or the other. Like I, I've seen superintendents just hammer on their staff, you know, at the beginning of the year and kind of like they start the year feeling defeated. And then also like, hey, don't ever change. It's like, no, we want a little bit of change is not gonna hurt anybody, right? Like it, it, there is that, that balance that you did. And you did such a wonderful job. And so I found you to be really inspiring. And so I wanted to ask, um, like when you think of the teachers that you've had, maybe the teachers you worked with, Who's a teacher that really inspired you and why? You know, when I think about the, the teacher aspect, I go all the way back to my junior, maybe senior year, uh, because I had him both. Uh, but his name was Gary Roadside. Uh, and Mr. Roadside was a transplant. Uh, he was from, I believe, Connecticut or, or New York, but he found his way uh, to Central Florida. Right, right there. Like senior. everybody that lives here. Like everybody does. <laughs> But, but, you know, he he had a way of making me feel as if though I was smarter than I had realized uh, and that I had more capabilities than I was always uh, putting forth. So it was always, hey, you, you know, you're better than you realize and you can do more than you've done. Keep going. Keep going. So that that was uh, he's always been uh, you know, the wicked part is I've never had a chance to tell him that. Right. Uh, I, I don't, I, I've never seen him since I left high school, but uh, that was the guy who probably helped propel me from a near high school dropout to uh, what you now call Dr. Simmons. All right. Let's, let's give it for Mr. Roadside. I am, this is my, this is my hope from this podcast. And it, it is actually, um, we wrote the book because of a teacher. It was interesting the very first time I did this, I actually answered the questions myself and I shared about teachers that inspired me. And within 24 hours, they all, somebody saw it that knew them and they sent it. So I'm really hoping, right? Wow. So make sure Mr. Rhodes said, if you get this, make sure you contact Dr. Simmons, right? Cause I think that's a pretty powerful story. So that's what I'm hoping happens, right? That, that, those are my favorite stories ever. So um, I know that you are currently superintendent. I know you've also done other administrative roles. You to also told me that you were a high school principal and really amazing leaders at Griffin Spalding. I was really, really impressed um, with the work that they're doing um, and, and connecting with them. But when you think of like an administrator, maybe you worked with someone, maybe you had as a kid, who is also someone that really inspired you and why? Um, so there, there are two, if I may. 
as yep. a student um, back in Kissimmee, we had a, we had a, a coach. His name was Larry Shamsadeen. Uh, and Coach Sham, as we effectively called him. But Coach Sham had a way of of calling you to the carpet mm-hmm. um, and and posturing you to to understand that that he was going to hold you to the expectation. And as a male student, uh, particularly an African American male student, uh, he did not settle well with making excuses, uh, nor did he, you know, allow you to um, pretend as if though you could make a blank statement about other people's issues, and that's the reason why you're not going to be your best self. Uh, Coach Sham always, you know, I had to go to school, <laughs> um, but but as you know, I guess a kid who knew how to be mischievous to the degree in which uh, I was pushing teachers right up to the line. Uh, he helped me to understand when and how to let go of that. Yeah. Um, because teachers had a job to do. And as long as I was, you know, being my, you know, mischievous self, I was distracting and detracting from their efforts. Uh, as a professional, um, I had a superintendent uh, by the name of Curtis Jones, who uh, really taught me about leadership, you know, h- how to lead others, uh, but also how to lead the thinking of others so that, you know, people can, you know, arrive at a particular decision or understand a particular decision in their own way. Um, that has been invaluable. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can think of several others, but uh, from one end as a student or, or as an adolescent, and the other as, you know, as, a, you know, an adult, those were probably the two individuals who had the greatest impact. I Both love it. Highly respected. People. I love it. And the, one of the things I, I just wrote an article on this and I, it is, I'm hearing, I'm starting to see things a little bit differently with this. There's, you know, people listening to this that work in education, which is the majority of people that listen to this podcast. We know there's a lot of stuff, mental, emotional health going on, not only with students, but adults. And I, I'll, I'll try to find the link and share it. I can't remember the person, but they basically did research is that when kids become too dependent and believe that someone else will fix their problems, they, there's almost a feeling of hopelessness. And they're saying there's a connection between some of the mental health stuff that's going on. Now I know it's not, um, you know, it's, I, I don't think anything's ever just as linear as that as possible, but right. that really made sense to me. That made sense is that if you feel that you can't take responsibility and figure out your own way forward, what hope is there? Right. And there's that. So I, that story, and I, it's amazing you brought that up because that really, I literally just wrote about that yesterday and just kind of uh, serendipity to kind of hear that because that kind of get, you know, getting kids and I, like I was talking about my daughter uh, in the post, she, her, she's uh, learning to play the piano and so am I. We're learning it together. Now she's seven, right? And I, you kind of have this mentality like, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm 48, I can't learn it. Now I'm like, why can't I? So I'm going and so she was using, I downloaded this app, we've both been using it. And, but it's both new, it's new to both of us. And she's playing and she said to me, hey dad, I don't know how to use this app. I'm like, figure it out, <laughs> right? Like. She's like, what do you mean? I said, well, how, I don't know how to use it either. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm just going to start pressing buttons until I figure it out. So you can do the same thing. She's like, all right. And then, and that's what kind of sparked that thinking is that, you know, cause we want to rush over there and, you know, kind of like solve problems for our kids, not, not only as educators, but adults and long-term that not that, you know, it's hurtful. So I love hearing that story. So last question, yeah, I know, I know you have, um, we, <laughs> We have this in common. All right. We knew the line. <laughs> we knew the line and we played with it. Right. And so no, I don't think sometimes I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't probably just do it as a kid, you know, and maybe I do it a little bit right now too, but you know, kind of flirt with that line, That's right. um, you know, and kind of seeing how far. You, so, um, I know that you're very reflective. I know you've had a very unique journey in education and we're going to talk more about that on the next podcast, but. If you can go back to your very first year of teaching and you can give yourself a piece of advice, what would that be? I, I know, I know limiting it to one is the word. <laughs> so I, I, I'd, have a, I'd have a sit down with me. Yeah. I, yeah. That, all the you know, you done. I, I tell you what, so let, let me preface it by saying, uh, I would remind my, my first year teacher self 
this is not what you went to school for. Mm. Um, I would then remind myself you're in this role because you made a promise to come back and serve in the community. And, and, and lo and behold, your high school principal saw or thought enough of you to hire you as a special education teacher. Mm -hmm. so postured in that regard, I would, I would say to myself, the impact that you're going to have on people whose names you are likely to forget will be indelible. Mm. Be careful because 29 years later, when there's a perceived shortage of professionals that, that, that are in the same arena, you may have had a role to play in that. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is true. That that's what I would say. Uh, but at the same time, Georgia, I, I'd like to think, I'd like to think, I'd hope that I was able to teach some of my students how to be good people. I'm not sure how well we did with learning the standards. I'm not sure how well we did with, um, you know, instructing the curriculum. But my hope is that at least one of them is a good parent as a result of being in my classroom. Yeah, that that is like, you know, there's a lot of talk um, in education right now. There, I kind of see this almost weirdly a little pushback to the relationship piece on how important it is. Like, have you tried relationships? And like, I've seen it and I find it really fascinating. Because I know when I hear that from teachers, I know they would hate if their administrators didn't care about them. Right. And that's what I always find fascinating. And, and I think the idea that relationships in education are the end all be all is, I don't believe that, but it's the beginning, definitely. Yeah. And really the example that we set, and you and I were kind of touching on this a little bit before we start recording, the example we set as adults is probably the most important thing we teach and how we connect and what we aspire, um, inspire in the next generation. So I love talking to you, man. I'm, are you going to feel bad? I know you get a job to do. It's right? all so I feel bad because I know I'm trying to stay away from the sports stuff. But hey, just thanks so much for your time. Like it's it's really been awesome to connect with you. And um, I love the humans. I know that because a lot of times people don't see the human side of superintendents. I love that you talk sport. I love it. I love it. I'm I am who I am. I love it. And so, hey, thanks for being on Griffin Spaulding. I hope uh, I want to say hi to you, too, because you're all a wonderful group. Thanks for being on. I look forward to talking to you more.